All right, good morning. So here I am. I just got the delivery of my Woodland Mills HM126 sawmill this morning. Still in the box. And I've got a giant pile of logs sitting in my driveway waiting for it to be put together. So I'm gonna start to uncrate it and see what's involved in getting this thing assembled. So just uh, starting to uncrate it. So it comes packed in this uh, angle iron steel pallet slash uh, cage. So really well packed. Um, it is gonna mean, it does look like things got shifted around a little bit in transit. I mean, you can see that there's a little bit of uh, parts sticking out through some of the cardboard and, and such. Looks like the air filter cover got knocked off the, the engine, but so far it doesn't look like there's anything that's damaged. And I think overall it's probably packed pretty well. Okay, so it's a couple days later and I've kind of skipped ahead in this to where the mill is totally assembled. Um, it wasn't really my intention to make sort of a step-by-step -step video and just being honest, it was a really hot day and I was just trying to get it done. So the whole process took me about six hours um, and I'm just gonna give kind of like a quick overview of some of the things that were helpful to me and what I found. Um, so like I said, putting it all together, roughly six hours, I did it all by myself. I do have a, uh, a hoist above it, which was kind of helpful, maybe even critical to being able to set the sawmill head onto the track. Um, so as far as the shipping condition and parts, no issues. Uh, there was no damage to the piece of equipment and every all the parts are here. I will say, you know, you take this either as a really good comment on Woodland Mills or maybe not so good is there were exactly the right number of you know washers bolts nuts etc so it worked out really well but it is a little scary that there wasn't anything extra so you know if i had dropped or lost something if i was putting to get this together not in my driveway but out in the forest somewhere that could potentially be a little bit of a problem but but no real issues um tool wise really nothing too special although i will say a couple things i found useful and it might not be on hand for everybody so of course everything's metric uh smallest thing was a seven millimeter little bolt uh, biggest thing so you're gonna need a uh this is, this is a 30 millimeter metric socket and you're gonna kind of need either two of those so i used a i didn't have two but i used an inch and a quarter standard socket or you need a, a similarly sized wrench to tighten the bolts and nuts on the wheels for the track head um, so 30 millimeter you know something kind of big you might not have laying around 24 millimeter which is for the uh, leveling feet so all the nuts that go on the leveling feet for the track uh, that could also be a 15 16 I used a 15 16 open end wrench um, and you're going to need either a deep well socket or an open end wrench to adjust some of that stuff and then also a drift punch definitely came in handy. So when I was assembling it and had to try to line up some of the parts, especially trying to do it by myself, having a drift punch on hand was, was handy. Like I said, the having the hoist above it made a big difference. And then also I used, I used regular levels initially to level the track, but I have a laser level and that was definitely a big time saver in, time, in terms of trying to get the track totally level. So I haven't fired it up yet, but I'm gonna do that here probably today or tomorrow, and I'll record another video for that. But uh, I hope that is somewhat helpful, at least to cover maybe some of the things that aren't, or what I haven't seen in other videos, uh, if you're buying one of these. Uh, so far, great experience, and we'll see how it runs. Thanks.